بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The art of keeping information privacy is part of deen Some people just have loose tongues whether it's with regards to their lives, their families, their business dealings, any information that they get it, they spread it. So privacy is an important constituent of Deen and it has been highlighted. And if we cannot learn the adab and the ethics of this, then it will come with consequences. So there are not many people, illa mashaAllah is out for the goodness, out to help, out to benefit, out to see somebody progress. Forget the dunyawi lines, but even in deen, there is this vendetta and planning and plotting. So deen does not progress as well. So we have to be make sure that we do not become part of this extortion syndicate where whatever information we need to keep secret and confidential, it is kept confidential. So uh, there was a story of a man and a boy who entered a barber shop together. So the man first went for his haircut and uh, he told the youngster after his haircut that now you cut your hair, I'm just going to buy something from the supermarket. I may be back. So uh, the barber then continued to cut the boy's hair and the man hadn't returned. So the barber told the youngster, it looks like your father has forgotten you. The youngster said, no, 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 you got it wrong. He's not my father. He just walked up to me, grabbed me by the hand and said, come on, today we're going to get a free haircut. Today we're going to get a free haircut. So extortion, poor Baba Bichara, double haircut on the house. So we never know if, if certain information is known, it will save a lot of inconvenience. If certain information is released, it will cause a lot of inconvenience. So the people of Iman have a vision, they have a fikr, they, they, they weigh what they say, they weigh what they do, everything is calculated. After relying on the systems, many people employ people and just trust them without systems. So let me explain, trust the system, then trust the man. The fact that we haven't put a system in place and we've given him room, room to compromise his deen and his dunya, then we are partly liable and partly to blame. So a bald man sat down in a barber shop and he, said, he spoke to the barber and told him, I want, I, I just recently went for a hair transplant, but the pain was too difficult. It was too hard, I couldn't uh, handle it, so I abandoned it, so I've got, I've got money, I, I, I don't mind pain, but if you can make my hair look like yours without causing any discomfort, I'll pay you $5,000. So immediately what the barber did was, he shaved his own head, he shaved his own head, and the man had to pay him the $5,000. So we have to be vigilant, we have to be careful. So even when some information comes, a person shouldn't be loose to give out the information. Doesn't matter. Kafa bil mar'i ithman ayyuhadditha bikulli ma sami'a. Kafa bil mar'i kathiban ayyuhadditha bikulli ma sami'a. This is sufficient to make a person a liar to consider it to be false. Where everything that he hears, he promotes. He relates everything that he hears. So that's not the quality of the people of Iman. Is it true? 
if it is true, the person I'm speaking about and the details that I'm divulging, would I have said this in front of the person? And would he be happy by me spreading this information? If it's true, and even if he doesn't mind, will it benefit me in Akhirat? Will Allah subhanahu wa be happy with me by uttering these words? So, we, we, we have to learn the art of privacy. Umama bin Harith, who once upon a time, when her daughter was getting married, so she was regarded as Fasiha min Fasihatil Arab. She was amongst the most eloquent women ladies of the Arabs. She gave her daughter some 10 advices, which is quite famous. Amongst them was that فَلَا تَأْسِيَنَّ لَهُ أَمْرًا That obey your husband. Whatever he tells you, obey it. وَلَا تَفْشِيَنَّ لَهُ سِرًّا And information that is in your household, keep it confidential. فَإِنَّكِ إِنْ خَالَفْتِ أَمْرَهُ if you contravene his command, whatever he's told you and you don't listen to him, you don't obey him, or you expose his secrets, وَإِنْ أَفْشَيْتِ سِرْدَهُ Then there is a possibility that you will not be protected. لَمْ تَأْمَنِي You will not be protected and saved from his treachery. Your marriage is at risk, your destiny is at risk, you compromise in everything for something which is not worth being compromised. Likewise, Allama Mawardi was regarded as one of the greatest judges of the uh, Abbasi uh, Khilafat and he had compiled many kitabs. So he used to say that by a person being laxed in keeping secrets and privacy, there are three harms and consequences, three evil evils and three 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 consequences. sadr or killatu sabr. It shows that your heart is very constrained, your, your chest is constrained. You do not have patience. You are not a person that has patience. Secondly, it is a sign of negligence from the warning of the intelligence and a fault of what the wise have warned you for. And number three, that you've opened yourself to betrayal and disloyalty. The aqwal in the word of the hukma is sirruka min damika. Your blood and your secrets are one. Your blood is as if it is your secret. And فَإِذَا تَكَلَّمْتَ بِهِ If you decide you want to speak your secret, it's as if you shed your own blood. So the, uh, the, the, the types of secret one is بَيْنَ الْأَقَارِبُ وَالْأَسْتِقَاءُ وَالْمُسْلِمِينَ Between your friends, uh, family, relatives and Muslims. Then if شَاءُ Asrari Dawla with regards to the government strategic information. Then Baina Zawjiya between the husband and wife secrets. And the last one is Alanu Dhunub that uh, a person commits a guna sins and you expose that sins. Kullu ummati mu'afan illa al mujahirin. All my ummah is forgiven except those people who are bold and brazen when committing guna. They do a sin in the darkness of the night. Thumma yusbih wa kad satarullah alay. And Allah has covered that fault. He says, Ya fulan amil tul bariha kada wa kada. He goes on Facebook, he goes on Twitter, he goes on Instagram, and he posts pictures of, of, of his sins and his disobedience. He tells his friends, I went with so and so and I did this last night. Wa kad baata yasturuhu rabbuhu. Allah had hidden his. Sons, Allah had concealed his flaws. وَيُسْبِهُ يَكْشِفُ سِتْرَ اللَّهِ What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has covered up, He exposed that. So just the general rule, there may be certain circumstances where there is a uh, Shariat has given a, a gunjaish.
Sabilul Maslih al Ama for, for general benefit, like Abdullah ibn Abi Salul's situation, where he said, Lay Raja'ina, and as Zaid bin Arqam uh, mentioned what he said, likewise, when it's got to do with Shahada, giving testimony in front of a Islamic judge, then uh, also there is leeway, etc. So, leeway has been given with conditions in Shariat. But as Alama Mawardi has mentioned, Famin Ajli Dalika. Because of this importance of, 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 of secrecy, the person who you could find, confide in, you have to vet them very well. And that is more difficult to find a trustworthy person than a person who will look after your wealth. وَكَانَ حِفْزُ الْمَالِ أَيْسَرًا مِنْ كَتْمِ الْأَسْرَارِ You should say that protecting wealth is easier than preserving a secret. So, uh, a person should be very cautious, even with regards to information. Who in your household family should know certain information? Sometimes, when, when there's a need, then uh, the, the, the authorities, the people that need to get information, thieves, rely on the children. So, unfortunately, due to much negligence, where the, the safe places are, where the funds are kept, what funds are kept, etc. The, the, the kids are generally exposed to all of that. So within a minute, they may release all important secrets. A person is in a situation, uh, thieves have, have, have binded them up, and maybe they've taken certain things, but there's certain things which have saved your entire life, and you've, you've made enough preparations to, to protect that in a place where nobody will ever find it, illa mashallah. So the children are vulnerable. So uh, we, we, we have to uh, uh, mitigate and, and manage information and see who needs to know what basis. Likewise, very people are negligent nowadays, many people are negligent with regards to, to their phones and what privacy we, 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 we besides social media, but what what cyber security measures have been implemented to make sure that there is no compromise? In the olden days, they would need to physically send people to do surveillance, uh, prepare a detailed report, what time he leaves, where does he go, what is daily routine, they profile a person, they leave for five, six months, and then they, 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 they do what they need to do, whether it's a robbery, whether it's a kidnapping. Nowadays, it's gone more advanced with a touch of a button, they can monitor your every move, with the tracking systems on phones, they can monitor your movement to the minute, to the second, the calls we are speaking to, they can have access to your conversation, your bank accounts, see what you're worth. So so, so when, when they call the ransom, they know exactly what and where your assets are. So to such an extent, they can hack into your surveillance systems and see in your businesses, see in your homes as well. So many people are negligent to the most basic cyber security. They've never even heard of what's penetration, te penetration testing, where it's called a pen test or ethical hacking, where a, a cyber attack is simulated and uh, these cyber security uh, gurus evaluate your systems and see where um, there is weaknesses and potential for these unauthorized people to gain access to your system and, and abuse this data and uh, it's, it's, it's a type of a risk man management. Well, something else which is also different is it is a vulnerability assessment where they identify, they quantify, they uh, prioritize your vulnerabilities. So a person needs to know the processes whether it's their computer, their cell phones, for example people I, uh, somebody is an iPhone user, so each phone has an embedded serial number and that's associated with the account that you create. So these devices are sending information to the Apple servers and, and it identifies your device and, and, and it, it populates the information. So some people want to do a hard resetting of the iPhone but uh, it does not reset the serial number. So, even creating a new Apple ID, it may not help because Apple keeps a log of the accounts connected to the device. 
So if ever there's a rogue employee or a court order, they can access your new account, all your accounts from all your hardware up to your location data, IP addresses. And this is not only in uh, iPhone, but uh, Microsoft, Google as well. So when a person gets their new device, uh, it's very important what you're using on a day-to-day -day time, what you, by what processes you, you, you have. So from the beginning, from day one, before you even get it. So if a person takes the contract and they got a phone already compromised, very difficult to, to, to remove from the system. Ideally, you want to pay something cash from a store with no trace, not even a store. You go to an ice store, there's cameras which keep the data for, for probably years on end. So who came in, who bought it, um, the, 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 the payment details, the, the, the footage. So uh, there's a lot of surveillance system. So it needs to be done very, very uh, securely where, where there's no compromise and you make sure privacy. So getting a device where your identity is not revealed then the, the device cannot be connected to you, the place that you are buying it, the location from where you, you reside in. Uh, all of this is important. When you activate it, where you're going to activate it, the uh, location, do you have the same pattern? So there shouldn't be one, one system, one pattern, which, which, which uh, uh, repeats itself all the time. Some people say, you know what, it's cheaper to buy a second-hand phone, but there's a lot of data and a history that comes with these phones. It could be somebody who's a kingpin, uh, who's got a history, and they've been monitoring, and, and now you access that... Uh, uh, gadget and, and, and all your information is compromised because they're already monitoring on the next level. So uh, again, there's a big debate whether uh, Apple or Google, but uh, some people, are, are, are they're fanatics and, and, and each, each platform has its pros and cons. Generally, Allah Alam Sawab, Apple is a most secure platform and uh, you can ask developers who develop apps, etc. There is more, although the, the, the information is being relayed as constant data transmissions, information is collected about you. But uh, on, on, a, on a comparison level, Microsoft and Google is more compromised. So when a person gets the device that's important, then when uh, creating accounts on that device, the screen set up, uh, that's very important as well. So the different aliases, email addresses, verification processes, those systems, and we're not going to get into the details, needs, needs to be very, very um, unidentifiable. So uh, for our general everyday security or time may come one day where there will be a need to protect one in all. But uh, we, we, we need to just learn the art and learn the skill. Uh, there's a, a lot of lot of benefits and, 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 and it's important as well. So when a person has the phone, the location services on, the Wi-Fi, which Wi-Fi you're using, you cannot be using the same Wi-Fi location, they'll, they'll put two and two together. You cannot be using the same place. You cannot be activating it at the same place. Uh, so these are all, all things which we, you need to consider as well. Likewise, disabling uh, services, the, 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 I, the cloud service, uh, very, 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 very risky. Uh, your, your information, one, one, one message, one text could compromise you. Likewise, the, um, the location, a general phone that you would buy, even in the Android, the, the, it's already, uh, if you go into privacy and uh, location, screen security, privacy, location services, they've got uh, location history, location services, location sharing, then they've got even apps that have location permission. So WhatsApp have got already access to your location. You've given them permission, Google services and, uh, and, and, and preferences. So location services, that's a no-go zone. Um, ideally, if you had to use location services, have a separate GPS or Garmin that you bought off the grid of the system with no trace and, and, and use that. Using the phone is, is folly for finding directions. You're literally exposing your entire life your, your location, your, your, your strategic points. So that's a no-go. Likewise, contacts, you limit the applications, the services, calendar as well, uh, photos, if you're not gonna need it, when you need to do it, you activate it. The microphone, they can access the microphone and camera remotely. 
so there's a lot of functionalities which you need to disable uh, on the phone as well. Even the passcode, uh, if it's a six digit number, you could go into the passcode options and go to custom numeric code and, and make the code longer. So it's very difficult to hack as well. The facial recognition service, that you shouldn't be using at all for many reasons. And uh, the question also whether you should go with a, 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 a fingerprint biometrics as well, if you're in a position compromise under duress, then you, you'll have to unlock your device. So, so uh, that's happening now recently where people's bank accounts are cleaned out uh, in kidnappings and abductions as well. So you'll have to make a call. Likewise, in the courts as well, if uh, uh, certain countries, jurisdictions, you have to provide the fingerprint to, to open it up, then you, you are bound to do that. But if it's a code, you're not bound to give the code. So these are all uh, important uh, things which we, we need to do for our preservation. And that ultimately is for the preservation of Dean. The Amal for today is the Amal for Miswak. So we should have a routine. Musa radiallahu anh said, Abu Musa uh, Ashari radiallahu anh said, I entered on Nabi alayhi salam's company. Dakhaltu ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tarafu siwaki ala lisanihi. And I could see the miswak on his tongue, the edge of the miswak on his tongue. Nabi alayhi salam was utilizing the miswak. So this should be like our daily routine now, the billah. We've replaced the miswak with um, cigarettes. We've re re replaced it with vape, this e-cigarettes etc all, all of this year our, our our tongues are engaged in all forms of battle besides what nabi ali salatu salam had encouraged us to do wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillah rabbil alamin